if we have initial concentrations and a equilibrium constant, we can use those to figure out the equilibrium concentrations. We are going to do an ice box process for this. So um, for this reaction, we got PCl5 decomposing into PCl plus chlorine. We have our Kp of 381 at 600 Kelvin. And that's just being precise. We're not going to use that temperature, but the Kp will change with the temperature. So the initial concentrations, 1.2 atmospheres for PCl5, 0 for PCl3, 0 for Cl2, that's our initial. Change is going to be a change variable. And this is just based on the coefficients here and our expected direction that this reaction is going to go. Since we have reactant and no product, we know the reaction will go forward for products uh, only. And there's no possibility of going backwards. So we're going to subtract off the reactant and add on to the products. We have a coefficient of one in front of all our reactants and products. So we have that coefficient of one in front of all the x's also. We add initial and change together, and that's our equilibrium expressions. So in this case, we have 1.2 minus x. That's our equilibrium expression. 0 plus x is this x. 0 plus x is this x. Then we write our equilibrium expression. So our Kp, which is 381, equals our products over our reactants. We put in our equilibrium expression. And then we're going to reduce it down. Um, so I multiply the uh, 1.2 minus x across. I uh, multiply it through the parenthesis and I move everything to one side. And I move it to the side. I like to have uh, the squared x term or the highest x term to be positive. And get it down here. And this is now in a quadra quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we could use the quadratic expression to solve for what x is. And of course, it's going to give us two answers, but only one of these answers is going to be valid. And um, so our x always has a range, and it's good to know what our range is. Uh, And so concentrations or pressures can never be negative. So that limits our range. So our range is going to be between zero um, x is going to be between zero and 1.2. So we know that's our range. So one of these answers is going to be within that range. The other answer is outside of that range. So the one in the range is our answer. So we figure out what our a, b, and c is, put it into the quadratic expression, work it down, and one answer, 1.195, the other one is negative. Our answer cannot be negative, so what is that 1.195? And when I first did this uh, square root here, I got 383. Uh, 383 minus 381 divided by 2 is 1. I put uh, 1 in here, 1 divided by 1.2. I wasn't near that 381. So it's always good to do a check at the, at the end. Make sure that when you put your pressures or concentrations into the expression, you get the right Kp back out. So I went and did a, my calculation to get it out. 383.4. Now when I finished it off, I got a 1.2, and this one went down to zero. We can't have a zero, can't divide by zeros. So I had to go and do a 383.39. So uh, we want to check our answer, and in this case, I had to keep expanding my significant digits until I got a decent answer on this. Um, so my decent answer, I got down to x of uh, 1.195. And then we go back to our expressions and put them in. Uh, so 
the two products are 1.195, uh, the, the reactant 1.2 minus the 1.195, we got a 0 0.005. I put it in to the expression, I get a 285, and that's reasonable but not great. If I wanted to uh, get more precision, I would just go for another decimal place and I should get a better answer on that. But um, this is the process. I'll do it uh, one more time here and then um, show us a, a harder type of a problem. So here we have a charcoal carbon, you're acting with carbon dioxide to form carbon monoxide with a Kc of um, 1.73. We're given our equilibrium, our initial concentrations, 0.12 molarity for carbon dioxide, 0.40 for carbon monoxide. So now in this case, uh, the question made a comment about, we just have sufficient charcoal. So we don't have to worry about the how much we have. We just have to have sufficient so we don't run out of charcoal. Um, but it doesn't show up in our expression, so we're not going to use, it, use any numbers on it. And in this case, I set this up, uh, making it going forward. So I subtracted it off the reactant, added it onto the product. So I coefficient one, so I'm subtracting one X, coefficient two, so I'm adding two X. And in this case, if I guessed wrong and it was going backwards in the reaction, I didn't do the reaction quotient, you just like, check what the direction is going. But my answer could be negative. My x could be negative if the reaction was actually going backwards. So I, I checked to see what I can do. I can drop this down to a 0.12. So x can go all the way up to 0.12. Uh, and then um, if I subtract this down, it can only go down to a 0.2. So my range here is between a negative 0.2 to a positive 0.12. So I add up initial and change to get the equilibrium expression for both. I write out the equilibrium, equilibrium expression, put in my uh, variables, and I crunch it down. So I multiply the uh, 0.12 minus x across. I square this term here. Um, I multiply through the parenthesis for the next step here, and I move everything over to the left. So actually, I move everything over to the right because I like the positive x squared here. So move everything to the right. So now I have it in the quadratic form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Identify what my a is, is four. My b is a 3.33. My c is a negative 0 0.4, I put these terms into the expression. I work it down and again, I get two answers coming out because of the plus minus term in there. This negative 0.8 is too negative, so that's outside the range. So we only has, have one answer in the range, 0 0.014, smaller than 0.12. So I put it into the expressions for carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. I get the concentrations out. And this is usually what we're asking for is the concentrations, but it's always good to check them. So I go back uh, and put these concentrations into the equilibrium expression, see what it comes out. It comes out to be 1.73, exactly right on. So um, sometimes we have to keep adding on significant digits until we get close enough. Sometimes it comes out right on um, up front. Now, let me do a harder problem. Yeah, that's good. This one. Just. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have SiH4 gas plus two chlorine give us SiCl4 plus two H2 with a Kp of 0 0.025. We have our initial um, concentrations, 0.5 atmospheres of 
SiH4, 0.5 atmospheres of Cl2, nothing of the product. So we know we're going to go forward in the forward direction here. So subtract off the reactants, add on to the products, subtract 1x coefficient 1, subtract 2x from chlorine coefficient 2, add on 1x for the silicon uh, tetrafluoride and 2x for the hydrogen. So uh, these are just matching the coefficients in the equation. At initial and change, get our equilibrium expressions. We put into the these terms into the equilibrium expression, and then we can reduce it down. So we're going to have our, um, in this case, x times 2x squared. We end up with a cubic term. So now it's going to be something that we can't use the quadratic equation for. And uh, there's different ways that we can handle this, but um, um, you know, one thing I did is I worked it all down. So I um, multiply the denominator all out, I multiply it across, and then draw it all over. So I have a, a 4.1x cubed minus 0.1x squared plus 0.03125x minus 0.003125 all equal to zero. Again, I checked my range I could have here. Um, so I can uh, go uh, 0.5 uh, minus 0.5, that's okay. But over here, I can do 0.5 minus 2 times 0.25. So my maximum is a 0.25. And I can't go negative. So I'm between a 0 and a 0.25. And um, there are a couple ways when we don't have quadratic, there's a couple ways that we can do it, but it's a an iter, iterative process. So um, one way is I took this term here and putting x's in and trying to narrow it down to that zero. Another way is I could take this term or this term and put x in and narrow it down until I find the kp. So either way, uh, generally works. Um, there can be some difficulties at times, and I'll try not to give you any of those problems. So I knew the range up here, and that's what we want to know before we get too heavy into this. So I start off over here, putting in the, the bottom end of the range, 0, and the top end, 0.25. So I see that there's a, a negative and a positive. So we're looking for where it crosses from negative to positive. Again, with a cubic term, there should be three answers overall, but only one answer should be in this range. Uh, so I just do in a point one, it's positive. So now I want to look between zero and point one. So I did a point zero five, it's negative. So now I want to go between point one and point zero five. So I did a, a point zero seven. And uh, so now I want to go between 0 0.07 and 0 0.1. Um, so I did a 0.8, it's positive. So I want to go between 0.7 and 0 0.8. 0 0.75, positive. So now be between 0 0.7, 0 0.07 and 0 0.075. I did 0 0.073, 0 0.071. So between 0 0.07 and 0 0.01 is the word that goes crosses the zero point. And between these, they have the same number of uh, zeros here, but this one's closer to the uh, crossing point than this one is. So this is a, uh, one answer. And actually, uh, I'm doing it to a second decimal place. So I'm really doing it to a, a two significant digits, 0 0.070. The other way that we can do it is we take a, this expression, put in x and try to get it closest to the um, kp, 0 0.025. So I, I did a 0.1, and um, I had done this already, so it already kind of guided me on how to uh, uh, aim this one. Um, uh, well, also, let me see here. I know that uh, if I use zero here, I would get zero out. So now I did a 0.1 and it's greater than this. So I want to be between zero and 0.1. So I did half of that, 0 0.006 line. Um, 
So this is smaller than this, the point one is larger. So I go in between and I, I get really close. I try a little bit more and it's a little bit above. So this one's a little bit below uh, the point zero zero two five. This one's above, this is close to it. So in both processes, I end up getting the same answer, point zero zero seven zero. So of course, we're gonna be asking for the concentrations, the pressures of these. So we go back to our equilibrium expressions, put in uh, point zero zero seven zero for the X here. And we get um, 0.43 atmospheres for the SiH4, 0.36 for the Cl2, 0 0.070 for the SiCl4, and 0.14 for the hydrogen. And then this last step is just to check here. So taking the concentration I get, put it back into the equilibrium expression, I end up with a 0 0.0246 was real close to our 0 0.025. So that's a good result. So it's always good to do that last check to make sure we have a good uh, answer because we're doing a bit of calculation here. If we uh, drop a sign or something like that, um, uh, we can be off a little bit. And uh, to be honest, uh, uh, in this calculation here, I, or was it over here? One of those, I made a mistake when I, when I got down, I got an answer. I did my check and the answer was bad. And I went back and redid my check uh, calculation here uh, with a more deliberate write out of the calculation. And I found my mistake, corrected it. And I got one answer that worked and another answer that gave the same result. So it's always good to do our checks. Uh, but this is how we get our um, equilibrium concentrations or pressures from initial concentrations. Most of the time we'll be doing um, something that would fit in a quadratic rule. Um, and uh, I will certainly hopefully have at least this iterative process method of successive approximations is what it's called. Um, I will hopefully have this in our homework to make us work a little bit, but I'll probably not have a, us do this on our test.